I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I don't have my eyes! I didn't miss about anything! Not once, not one time! Ballistic X vs. Sever, the best titled film of all time, came out in 2002, and it has since been reviled as one of the worst, if not the worst, reviewed film on Rotten Tomatoes. This film stands at a 0% with 118 reviews. After this review, it's about to be 119. That's actually really hard to do. Usually somebody comes in there and gives the film a lukewarm positive at the very least, but in the case of this movie, it commits a very serious crime against film. See, a film can be really bad. A film can be so bad that it's good. A film can be bad, but also kind of interesting. But unfortunately for this film, it commits the universally accepted crime of being boring. This is a movie that everybody can agree is so boring and uninteresting that it's easy to see why nobody likes the movie. It's not a film that's so inept that it's a Tommy Wiseau experience, and it's certainly not a great movie, nor is it even a, a mildly entertaining movie. It's just a film that you can possibly remain conscious while looking at. <laughs> That's my pull quote. This film also has the distinction of having a video game adaptation come out before the movie is even finished. A game based off of the script called X vs. Sever came out for the Game Boy Advance. So strangely, the video game based off this movie isn't actually based off the final film, nor is the film based off of the video game. This is a very unique thing that happened with this movie, and it combined to make one of the biggest box office disasters of that year. So Antonio Banderas plays X, a man who used to work for a secretive government agency. He was very good at his job, as we are often informed, but he's retired because his wife has been killed, or at least he believes his wife has been killed. And we first meet him early on in a bar, a place where all sad, reluctant heroes go in movies. He's smoking, he's drinking, and some men are trying to recruit him for a job. They promise him that if he will do this job, they have information about his wife, that she might not actually be dead, and they can help him find his wife, but only if he does the job first. This naturally pisses him off. But what I'd really like to talk about in this scene is the state of the bar. Why is no one there? <laughs> Some extras could really help out this scene. It's just Antonio Banderas and the other people he's supposed to talk to. It's like they got the location and forgot to fill it with people. And we soon meet Lucy Liu's character, Sever. She is kidnapping a young boy, who we find out is the child of our main villain. A ruthless bad guy. Why is he ruthless? I actually don't know. Uh, why is he a bad guy? Because the script says so? What I'm getting at is that this movie tells you how to feel about the characters. We're told Antonio Banderas is a badass. We're told he has skills, but we don't see any of these skills for a very fucking long time. We don't see the character X do anything of merit for something like 30 minutes. We're just constantly told that he's this epic badass. Let's look at the movie Taken, for example. It's similar in that we're told constantly that Liam Neeson has a set of skills. And until someone takes his daughter, we don't really see those explode. That being said, he's also a bodyguard. And in the beginning of the movie, we see him have to do something to defend the person he's guarding. So we are set up visually what he can do and we understand that he's a very dangerous man. We don't know any fucking thing about X. He's just a sad sack sitting in a bar. Why are we constantly told that he's so epic? Show us something epic. And it's the same with the bad guy. He's just a bad guy. We don't fucking know why. At the very least, Sever is shown kicking ass when she abducts this child. So that's somewhat of a setup for what she can do. And since the film set up her skills early on, they decided to set up absolutely nothing else about her. She is an emotionless brick throughout the whole movie. Lucy Liu is a very likable actress, but she is horrifically bad in this film. You can tell they're trying to make her that silent, stoic badass that doesn't say anything, that doesn't seem to emote, that is just a ruthless killing machine. But that's not how this works. You have to have some charisma. There has to be something about you that feels human. Something. Anything. In fact, I paused the movie right around where you're used to getting your inciting incident, that thing that propels the movie forward and you're invested in the story, hopefully. I was about 13 minutes into this film and I had no idea 
what it was about. There's a scene where the agency that's recruiting Antonio Banderas sits him down and gives him a huge exposition dump about some sort of nano machine that can be injected into someone's bloodstream to give them a heart attack and how this bad guy wants this technology and how somebody might be smuggling it and he has to find it. But if you're not paying attention to every goddamn word, which by the way, is something I try really hard to do in a movie, you will miss things. Now, I've said in the past in a movie like Mission Impossible Fallout, for instance, that when you're supposed to pay attention to every scene, that that's a good thing. That's when a movie has something to offer. That's when dialogue has something to give you emotionally or, or at least get you invested in a story. But a guy just standing there rattling off about a fucking nano machine that's possibly out there that maybe could do something and our hero who's sitting there looking like he'd rather be doing anything other than be in this movie is a very easy way to make me not give a shit about your plot. If you don't seem to give a shit about your plot, guess who also won't? The fucking audience. Everything about this movie feels low energy. Antonio Banderas walks around looking like a zombie. Lucy Liu doesn't emote. The extreme overuse of slow motion bogs down the action scenes from any form of intensity they might have had. Which brings me to what I really would like to talk about, and that is the period after The Matrix came out. In 99, The Matrix obviously changed the way we viewed action movies and sci-fi. It was something that was very revolutionary. And there was a period that I just called the post-Matrix years, after 99 to maybe like 2004, 2005, where Hollywood was absolutely obsessed with recreating whatever it was The Matrix had. Not only is this a Warner Brothers movie, just like The Matrix, but it's also a film with a Don Davis score, who also composed the music for The Matrix. And it seems to me that Warner Brothers and the makers of this movie took all the wrong lessons from The Matrix. They thought, well, people wearing sunglasses and black clothing with slow-mo fighting and slow-mo shootouts, well, that's what made The Matrix good, right? Fucking wrong, bitch. The Matrix had a great story. It had great characters. It had great visionary filmmakers behind it. This film takes the aesthetics of The Matrix, rips them off of it, tries to put it into another movie, and fails horribly. Another one that I have talked about in the past that I will probably also review in a hilariosity segment in the future is The One, starring Jet Li. Not only was the title a ripoff, but so was the action in the film. So as X is out there trying to find his wife, he runs into Sever, who he realizes has this kid. And she wages all out war on the streets of Vancouver. I mean, people are being shot and killed left and right. She's beating dudes with batons. She's shooting all over the place. And the people against her are also shooting all over the place. Without exaggeration, Vancouver has turned into a war zone. And here's our hero X running around Doing what? He shot a goddamn tire. That is all we know about our super special skilled guy that we're supposed to think is so badass. He shot out a tire. Get that guy on the job. He fucking knows what he's doing. For instance, in the middle of this very awkward ballet fight that X and Sever have, one punch seems to hurt his hand. <laughs> This guy couldn't even be a celebrity bodyguard, let alone some super agent. In the middle of this action scene, they stop to have this really awkward bit where this guy is making out with a girl, and the suggestion is that she doesn't want him to. Hey, beautiful, what? Oh! 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 My nose! And it just stalls the action for some really awkwardly placed comedy that doesn't seem to make any sense. Why are these people just there in an alleyway. Who is this guy? Who is this girl? What is fucking happening? Why should I care? And Ray Park is in the film. That's right, Darth Maul himself. I want you to observe a scene with him. You're sweating. Except he's not sweating at all. It's a fucking close up, goddammit. Do you think we're fucking idiots? And since the only thing the film really seems committed to is mindless action sequences, it's strange to me that they couldn't even get those right. <laughs> Is that what happens when people get shot? Ugh. Like, that's, ugh. Like, what is that? <laughs> After Vancouver is turned into a war zone, Antonio Banderas finds himself at the house of one of his fellow agents having a staring contest.
I wrote down in my notes, I wrote, staring contest builds character. <laughs> no, it doesn't. At this point, we're about 35 minutes into the film, and there has been one scene with the villain. One. Why should I fucking care about any of this? So after fighting one another, X and Sever go onto their computers and research the other person. And we get a great two minute scene where they read. I don't know how they have access to these documents. I don't know where they're getting these documents. And I don't know why we have a two minute scene where the characters are reading about the other person. You know, a lot of people look for alternatives to medicine. Uh, <laughs> sometimes people wanna go to bed and they don't like NyQuil. Just watch this. Uh, it'll work. But once X realizes that his wife is still alive and tracks her down, we get a weird emotional soap opera scene inside an aquarium, complete with romantic dissolves. The emotional beats in this movie are so unearned and cheesy that the very best they can do is cause laughter. So we learn here the epic backstory that took place to create this mess that we're in. Antonio Banderas was married to this woman, and this asshole decided to fake their deaths. He rigged two cars to blow up, X's car and his wife's. Both of them were positioned at the right spot to witness the other person's car blow up. So both of them have gone on living for the past seven years thinking the other was dead. Why? I don't fucking know. I don't actually know, goddammit! <laughs> Maybe the guy wanted to get with this girl. Maybe he wanted to smuggle nanotechnology into this child, which is what he does. There's no real motivation for any fucking thing. But here is where the big plot twist comes into play. And it's where the title X versus Sever stops making sense entirely. Because after this sequence, X versus Sever is no longer a thing. They had a fight one time and now they team up against the bad guy. Dumb fucking title. You guys get the point. The kid that Sever abducted isn't the bad guy's kid. It's actually X's kid that he had with his wife before he supposedly died. And the bad guy believes it's his son. I, I have a question that someone somewhere must have asked at some point. And I believe that I can describe this query with a graphic. So like all great hilariosities, X vs. Sever features some incredible green screen. I completely buy everything I'm looking at right now. None of this looks fake at all. So now we get to our big finale sequence, which takes place in a train yard. Explosions are happening all over the place. There are minefields as well throughout this train yard. Very little is set up. Very little is explained. The use of so much explosives is, is barely mentioned. It's all glossed over in a second. We're just supposed to believe that beneath all of these trains lies a ton of fucking C4. How did this happen? Who put the mines there? I don't understand what's going on. And of course, all of it is in slow motion. See, the Matrix compensated for its use of slow motion by also having fast moving action. It was used sparingly. When it was used, it was impressive. It was never just used to be slow motion for slow motion's sake. The only thing slower than the motion in this movie is its progression of story and its characterization. There was a point where it got, became so scattered um, for me that I didn't really know what we were shooting anymore with the action, with the, with, the, with the explosions. And I just thought, okay, well, I'm just gonna show up to the set and just let Chaos put me wherever he wants to put me. And you know, he would say, okay, now you're gonna turn and you're gonna run that way and okay, great. So then you get on the train and he's like, okay, you're gonna jump off the train. And I'm like, okay, great, whatever. And then they're like, okay, let, and rolling, <laughs> and then bring on the pyrotechnics. <laughs> and there's this huge, literally, <laughs> this fireball. <laughs> I think they shot the rehearsal because after that, I was just like, oh my God, thanks for telling me. So now Sever is gonna fight with Ray Park, who by the way, goes by the name of the Prince of Darkness in this movie, which is a fucking hilarious nickname. <sighs> and for some reason, they set up a noble fight. It's where they drop their weapons and they're like, no, we're gonna fight hand to hand. We're not gonna use any of our cheap weapons or tactics. I don't understand that. Where did they ever set up a history with these characters? How are we supposed to care about the noble fight? 
that's being set up between these guys. We don't know anything about their history. We don't know anything about their backstory. Why didn't they just fucking kill each other? Well, fortunately, Ray Park is capable of doing some amazing stunts, and so he at least looks cool. But Lucy Liu does not. She is so slow throughout this fight scene, and the impacts have no weight. It looks like shadow boxing. They barely look like they're making contact. It's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> And now that the main villain is there and Sever has the drop on him, she shoots him with something that apparently is that nanotech that can cause a heart attack. And in so doing, we get yet another hilarious reaction to being shot. Uh. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh. Like, oh. <sighs> Jesus. All that training. Is that the best you can do? No. This is. That intercut CG to let us know exactly what's happening inside of his bloodstream. <laughs> that to me was the level where, that is where I truly checked out. So everyone's saved. X and his wife have their kid and Sever's happy now, and the law shows up, and they accuse Sever of being a killer. So where's our mysterious killer? She's not a killer. Then what is she? A mother. So yeah, at one point, she had a kid. She has a photo she often looks at. It's about the extent of her characterization. But are you seriously denying that she's a killer? Need I remind you that she turned Vancouver into a goddamn war zone? Yeah, I'm thinking she's a killer. Like, she, factually, she is a killer. <laughs> she actually killed people. <laughs> so the movie ends with a very cheesy song, and that's X versus Sever. This movie is a mystery to me. It's a real enigma. It seems like a lot of money was given to a production that just wanted to rip off The Matrix. It's a film that is so, so, so boring that I can understand why it has that 0%. This is a movie where everything about it is so uninviting and so uninspired that it commits that universally accepted crime of being boring. This movie is nothing. It's extremely easy to dislike. There is but one memorable shot in this movie, and it's this shot of this dude falling on a car. I like how they committed to the actual impact and made a car that could do that. That was impressive. Besides that, this is something you've seen a thousand times before and done considerably better. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more hilariosities very soon. I'm excited to bring these to you. I know you guys have been requesting more of these and I'm gonna be working on a lot more of them. So I hope you guys enjoy them. Thanks as always for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.